All right, so we're going to be working on uh, building up a composition with uh, selections uh, and layers. So we're going to start with an image and build on top of that. So open and we're going to go to um, activity 221 files and we're going to open up the beach JPG. All right, so um, we're going to use this as the background and the base of the uh, document but what i want to do is i want to duplicate that background so that we're not messing around with the original image so i'm going to right click on that background and duplicate layer and say okay and then what i want to do is i want to bring in or i want to open um, an image and do some selecting because this activity is all about selecting so file open and we're going to choose surfer girl Okay, so we have learnt about all the different selection tools here, rectangular marquee, lasso tools, quick selection and so on. So you can decide which selection tools are going to work for you. Obviously the rectangular selection tool is not going to work for selecting something as complex as this uh, surfer girl. So I'm going to start with the um, object selection tool. This is a new tool in Photoshop and it's kind of a good place to start because if, if it works, it saves you a ton of time. So I always just try it, it doesn't always work, and see what happens. So I'm just going to drag over what I want to select. Okay, and let it do its work. And I can see actually it's a pretty good start. I can see it's selected pretty well, but if I look closely, I'll see that it's not perfect. So I'm going to actually have to go in and check it. So I'm going to press Command or Control 1 to go to actual size. And let's just have a look at this marquee. So zooming in a bit closer. Now, in a later activity in this learning unit, you will learn some extra, or I think it's actually learning unit three, you'll learn some more advanced selection tools. So we're working with just the basics at the moment. Uh, so we're going to make do with those. So I'm going to switch to the quick selection tool. And I want to add to my selection here to get her foot into the picture. So I'm just going to drag there. And a little bit more. Always do it a little bit by a little bit. And then it's taken a bit too much, so Alt, drag over what I don't want. you just got to persevere with selection. Selection is really about patience and about being a perfectionist. And obviously I am limited with time with these videos, so I'm being as, uh, as detailed as I can be. Alright, then here it's just missing a little bit. So oh, Okay, so now it's jumped out too far. So I'm just going to undo that, Command or Control Z. And I'm just going to take a little bit here and shave that off. And then here I can see that it's it's taken a little bit of the beach here just because the colors are quite similar. So Alt, drag over that just to clean that up. Okay, here I'm just going to improve that a little bit. Here it's gone a bit too far out. So Alt, drag. Okay, that's pretty good. And the rule of thumb with Photoshop is the closer you go in when you're working, the more detailed and the more accurate things will be when you zoom back out again. So if you go right in close, close, and you get things looking good, then when you zoom out, it's going to look even better. Okay, so now here, when you go, when you learn some of the advanced selection tools, you'll learn how to select all of these strands of hair. Now here, there's no way we can do this without the advanced tool. So we're going to simplify it a little bit. So just this area here under a chin, I'm going to hold down Alt to subtract from the selection and just take this bit in here like that. Okay, but I'm not going to worry about all these strands of hair. Um, just because this is not a, going to be a realistic composition and it's, um, it's really just about uh, learning the basic selection tool. So I'm holding down Alt. I'm just going in and improving these little bits. Um, now we missed the peak of her cap, so I'll just drag over that. Okay, and then around here that's all fine. And 
around here. I just want to take a little bit of this hair, not all the way. And then alt just to take back a little bit there. And then here, where her arm and her body are separated, there's a gap there. So alt, drag in there. Just to include that. Okay, the the um, skeg of the uh, surfboard is not included, so I'll drag over that. Okay, and here also a little bit missed here. Okay, and then Alt went a bit too far. And then again, this part of the surfboard. Okay, so obviously it went too far, so Alt drag over that. But there and here alt okay and then here it went a little bit too far for some reason so alt it's a little bit there some more here Okay, so just by switching between the normal quick selection tool and holding alt we can add or subtract from our selection and at any stage you can switch to the normal lasso tool and do the same thing so holding um, or going to add and just dragging to lasso a piece and holding alt and lassoing to refine it so you can just persevere and get um, get this looking as good as you can. Don't spend too much time on it. It's really just practice. Um, if you were doing this for real, then you should be spending as much time as you need to get it right. So now that we've got a fairly clean selection, I'm going to go to my Move tool, and I'm going to drag this up to my Beach Picture tab, Wait. When it flips to the Beach Picture, drag back again and release and so it's brought the beach girl into this picture now this is destructive editing in other words um, I have not brought the other pixels in because we haven't learned about layer masks yet but that's fine destructive just means that I can't go back and get other pixels back here I'm stuck with what I've got so that's fine at the moment so I'm going to position her about there she's way too big so command or control T to transform and I'm going to bring her down to about that size and I'm going to position her about there and then press enter to accept that. Um, you can see that the sun is throwing shadows over here from this um, pathway, from the, the posts on this pathway. So we need a shadow for the girl. So I'm going to duplicate that layer. Well, first of all, I'm going to rename it Surfer Girl. And then I'm going to duplicate it. I'll put the duplicate, duplicate at the bottom. And I'm going to go down here to this FX button. Now, you're going to learn about some of these things later. So that's the thing with some of these activities, is we will be jumping ahead a little bit so you'll learn some tricks before we actually get to covering that in the uh, material, but that's fine. It just means that you're a little bit ahead of the curve. So FX and color overlay and make sure black is the color overlay and press OK. So if I hide the top layer, you'll see that I now have the Surfer Girl copy and it's black. And I'm going to now transform that. So um, I'm going to go uh, Command or Control T, and I'm going to hold down Shift so that I can distort it, and I'm going to move it down like that, and release, and then I'm going to hold down Command or Control, and I'm going to drag this way to change the skew angle of the shadow, and then I'm going to press Enter. And then here, under Opacity, I'm going to take that value down until the shadow more or less matches the ones from the posts. 
So we've got about, I've got a 66% opacity there. So that looks pretty good. Um, all right, so next what I want to do is I want to change the sky in this picture. So this is a composition that's more creative than realistic. So you'll see where we're going. It's kind of uh, more, uh, it, it's kind of a high impact, um, maybe an advertisement or something like that. So I'm going to go back to the background copy and I'm going to hold down Alt and click on the eyeball, which is going to isolate that layer. Then I'm going to use Select Color Range because I want to select the sky and I'm going to make sure Sampled Colors is the one chosen and I'm going to click on the sky. Then I'm going to click on the little eyedropper with the plus next to it. And I'm going to add all the colors from the sky just by clicking and holding and dragging up. So I've got all those colors added. Now in this preview here, it's showing me what is selected as white, what isn't selected as black, what's partially selected is gray. So I need to adjust my fuzziness so that I'm getting mostly just the sky, but I don't want the sky to start going dark like that. So I'm going to put it to about there. So I've got mostly just the sky. A little bit of the sea here, but that's okay because the sky is reflected in the sea. And then okay. So that's quite a complex selection made very quickly. And I'm going to go to um, select, save selection. And I'm just going to call this sky. All right. And then I'm going to deselect. So the, the shortcut is Command or Control D or Select, Deselect. And then I'm going to hold down Alt, click back on that eyeball to bring all my other layers back. Now I want to bring in a new sky here. So File, Place Embedded, Moon Sky, Place. And I want to just see where it's going to fall. Yes, I want to just move it up a little bit. So the moon is closer to the top. I'm holding down shift so it doesn't move left or right. It just moves up and down. And once I've got it in position, I'm going to go select, load selection, sky, OK. And instead of me now inverting my selection and deleting the pixels, I'm just going to click down here on add layer mask. And what the layer mask does is it uses that selection to mask out what we don't want. So that layer is going to go underneath the surfer girl. Okay, so that's the sky. It's quite dramatic and it doesn't fit in with the composition at all. So now we're going to actually have some fun making this uh, like a really cool poster or something like that. So I'm going to start with the background and what I want to do is I want to build a gradient so gradients are something you'll cover again later on but we're just going to play around with them here I'm going to build a gradient out of the colors in the sky here so I'm going to go to the gradient tool and I'm going to so you can see I've already done it here so I'm just going to go to another gradient so that I can do it again okay so you're going to click on this gradient ramp and then you're going to start building this gradient so I'm going to click on the left hand color and then take my eyedropper and click on the sky to pick up that blue now you've got to make sure that you're on the correct layer so cancel I need to be on the moon sky layer so I'll go back here so for the left hand color I'm going to click on the blue for the right hand color I'm going to click on the lightest color on the moon and then I'm going to make a color in between. So when I see that little finger pointing, I'm going to click to make another color. And I'm going to use my eyedropper to pick up this purplish color on the moon. Okay, so that's my gradient. And I'm just going to call this uh, moon sky. And say new. So I've actually saved a new gradient. Okay. So now I'm going to go back to my background copy. And I'm going to go to image adjustments gradient map and over here I'm going to click and I'm going to go and find my gradient that I called moon sky and say okay oops and now I want to fade it back because it's way too much at the moment so with that layer selected I'm going to go edit fade gradient map 
And instead of fading it, I'm going to change the blending mode to overlay. Uh, is overlay the right one? Let's see. Yeah, it was overlay. All right, so that's giving us kind of more of a lighting that's being lit by this kind of um, sky. I'm going to repeat that for the girl now. That's the surfer girl layer. So select it, image, adjustments, gradient map. Let's go and choose that gradient map. Let's go to edit, fade, and overlay. Okay. And then finally, for the moon sky, it needs to be a bit brighter than that. So I'm going to duplicate that layer. And I'm going to change the blending mode for that layer to color dodge. Okay, so now we've got a really dramatic scene that we've made from all of these um, different layers that we put in here and our selection of the girl and the selection of the sky. So you can see how important it is to be able to make good selections. So if I just take all of these layers besides the original background layer and I group them so command or control G and I just call this poster and then I hide that you can see we've gone from that which is just a basic photo to that by using selections and a variety of other tools I hope you've enjoyed this video uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and see you next time